Pittman is here, and we will go straight to questions. We'll start on the front row. Oh. To your left. Uh, Chris Farblin, KCU 81 FM. Coach, you guys have recruited at a top 25 level over these past few cycles, but you guys have also been big time players in the transfer portal. I, just, I was just wondering, as a coaching staff in the modern era of college football, how do you balance uh, building a roster with recruiting and using the portal? Well, we always want to recruit high school players. And so our goal, and we haven't reached it, our goal is to sign 25 high school players a year. And I think last year we signed 21. And whatever you have left over, you know, it depends on how many scholarships you have, but basically at that point you get one leave, you bring one in. One leave and that's kind of your portal swap, if, the, if, if, if that makes sense. But we want to sign 25 high school kids a year if we can. We've just fell short of that a little bit. Second Host, rocket, uh, excuse me, uh, roster management is the hardest thing right now because of how many times the portal's open. Right side. Dan, Dan Peck, ESPN 1067 in Auburn. Coach, uh, you had two controversial close losses to Auburn uh, to begin your tenure. Last season, you guys go to Jordan-Hare and control the game and, and really win going away. The significance of that for your program and, and just your thoughts on, on getting to play Auburn every year. You know, at the time, I thought it was a big deal, you know, because we went there. You know, it's obviously a, a a little bigger deal when you, well, when you win, you win, but when you win in somebody else's place, when people's done that to us too, but um, yeah, I mean, Auburn, Auburn's a historical proud program and things of that nature. And I know coach will turn the program back to where it was. He, he's a fine uh, football coach, uh, but that was big for our program. We hadn't done it, you know, and uh, you know, the two years before that we, we probably should have won the game, and, and we didn't. So uh, that, was, that was good to go back and win the game. Left side, third row. Coach Clint Schweitzer from Starcade Media in Kansas City. Uh, the battle line rivalry with Missouri has certainly uh, evolved since Missouri joined the league in 2012. Just kind of talk about the significance of that game and what it's been like competing against Coach Drinkwitz since you've been at Arkansas. Yeah, I wish that we had won more than one of the three, you know. Um, uh, we've lost a couple games by two points and, and uh, certainly have high respect there. I, I like the rivalry. I think um, Coach does. I won't speak for him, but I think he does as well. Um, to me, that's, a, that's our rivalry, you know. I know to our fans, I think it's Texas probably, even though we, you know, we haven't played them in many years. We played them a couple years ago, but not regularly. And uh, or LSU, uh, but I respect uh, the program, Missouri. Uh, but obviously, we're on a short end of, since I've been there. We're on a short. We're one out of one and two, and uh, we've got to try as hard as we can to get that fixed. Front row, right side. Hey, Coach uh, Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you've been uh, pretty vocal on your philosophy change in the portal this last go around. Was it someone inside the program, outside of the program? What led to that philosophy change for you? Well, are you talking about my, um, are, you ta are you talking about the part where if you go in the portal, you stay? Are you talking about, I don't want anybody to go in the portal? Do I want them? Uh, what do you, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know Butch Davis told me a long time ago that everybody has to have great importance, <clears throat> whether it be secretary, coordinator, worst player on your team, best player on your team. And when you talk to somebody and you need his scholarship, and you're sitting there and you're talking to him, hey, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to play here. Boom, boom, boom. All this kind of stuff. That young man goes back. You don't say I'm taking your scholarship. None of us coaches do that, but you're encouraging him. He goes back to the best player on your team. It might be his best friend, and you lose both of them. Um, this year, I said, oh, what changed the philosophy of it? I just thought the other one wasn't working. And uh, so I just told everybody, I don't want anybody to leave. And the whole team, and uh, certainly, 
one did this spring, but uh, it wasn't a mass max exit, you know, like it had been uh, in December. Uh, so it just changed the way that is because the other wasn't working, to be honest with you. Left side, fourth row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Uh, just curious your thoughts on the, the Texas A&M-Arkansas rivalry and your time there and, and just, you know, what transpired last year, what kind of you, you took away from, from last year's game. I love I love that going to play in A&M. I like to play them in Dallas. I do. Um, not for sure that in, in the future wouldn't want us to play A&M in, in Razorback Stadium, but I like that game. Uh, it's a big game. Uh, obviously, last year, uh, we started off a little faster than they did um, and uh, looked like we were going to possibly take control of the game at some point. And uh, not only was it a turnover, it was a turnover for seven. Uh, we learned a lesson. We've got to get our kids back faster. We were still ahead at halftime. Uh, we've got to get our kids back faster. That's my responsibility. I've got to do a better job. Uh, obviously, I thought at the end of the game we'd make the field goal and we'd go home and win. Uh, we did not, and uh, uh, Cam Little's made a whole lot of field goals for us. So uh, it wasn't hit that miss. You know, we had a snap that went awry at the end when it looked like we were going to score. A lot of things went on in the game. So a lot of respect for A&M. I, I really like Jimbo Fisher, and uh, um, but obviously he wants to beat us, and we won't beat him too. But I, I, I do respect the rivalry of Arkansas A&M. Right side, third row. Coach, Billy Jones, KCOU, Columbia, Missouri. I was curious, I mean, you, you touched a little bit on that A&M game. I think it was five losses by a combined nine points. You bring in a new strength and conditioning coach this year. Was that part of it, hoping for yeah. someone to help your team finish games a little stronger? Yeah, I thought we got pushed around, you know, at times. And, man, it's hard for me to say that because I'm an offensive line coach. Mm -hmm. And I thought we got pushed around, uh, you know, Missouri uh, goal line down there. Uh, LSU goal line. Um, so I thought there was a change that be needed. Nothing negative about anybody. It's just thought a change would be needed. I think you see the kids uh, that we brought with us. Uh, they have changed. So uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you win four more games, you, you win 11. You know, well, everybody can say that, you know. But I don't know if anybody, a lot of people can say, hey, you lost four games by nine points and you go to specific situation of why you lost them, we got to clean that up. And part of that is the size and toughness and physicality of our football team. Left side, fourth row. Hey, Coach Pittman, Jamal Kennedy, WCFA 12 Sports in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, your team returns to Tuscaloosa this fall uh, where you guys played a really tough game back in 2021. What do you remember about the atmosphere in Brian Denny Stadium that Saturday? Yeah, they like football over there. Um, a lot of fun. I tell you, you know, anybody, any competitor wants to go in and play in those type venues. Hopefully Arkansas is that way when they come in to see us as well. But, uh, yeah, it was a – I think it was a night game, if I remember right. And uh, back and forth and back and forth. And they kept throwing touchdown passes, you know. And, and uh, we kept trying to answer. But – uh, at the end, we kicked an onside kick, and Traylon Burks <laughs> got killed out there trying to get the onside. Uh, but uh, great, great atmosphere, great game, storied program. Nick Saban, you know, a lot of things, a lot of good about that uh, situation. Second row. Hey, Sam, I was wondering if you could walk me through your process of, of hiring Travis Williams, what you liked about him and his pass stops and did his SEC experience kind of have any any factor into that a lot to do with that you know I had a lot because he understood recruiting understood urgency it's just different urgency of coaching in the SEC urgency of recruiting in the SEC it's different man by say it ain't it's that they're lying it's different and uh, so I wanted somebody that understood that and uh, obviously uh, I, I liked his style He's very, very aggressive. I liked his style. I like the fact that he's going to keep four linemen on the D-line on in the game. Uh, even if he's in an odd front, he can walk one up. Uh, but he was so positive, and 
he had a reputation before I ever went in there as a recruiter. And in the world of portal, you better have some guys that can recruit because if you can't, you're going to be gone. And I just felt so at ease that if I hired him that he could help me replace somebody if they did go in the portal. And he might be a reason why some of them might not go in the portal, if that makes sense, just by what kind of character, what kind of man he is. I love the guy. He's a wonderful, wonderful person. Third row on the aisle. Yeah, Coach, Evan Camico, Pig Trail Nation. Um, kind of on the topic of Travis Williams, we were talking to Landon earlier, and he brought up the fact that Travis is DJing in the locker room already, and I know you had a jukebox last year. Yeah. Is there any way we could see, you know, is there potential that Travis is going to play some music or some, some more Stevie Nicks this year? What are you going to play? Right now, you can go on Hot Springs Yacht Club on Spotify. And if you want to know what I listen to, that's it. Because that's mine. And I'm into mixes right now. I'm into, you know, old, old songs with a new mix, you know. I'm kind of into that. Like maybe on that, maybe the top seven or eight of those I put on this summer. But uh, no, we're going to have, still have a little bit of jukebox music. I was on stage actually singing Hot Blooded with Foreigner. <laughs> Uh, last weekend, last Friday, they shut my mic off. I don't know if the guy's afraid I'd take his job or what. I got a job. Don't worry about it. But uh, I was up there. Front row. Jason Batakia from the Arkansas Democrat. Gazette. You don't want it to. <laughs> I know you fielded a lot of uh, OU in Texas and yeah. straight to the SEC questions today, but kind of per, in a perspective of your program, um, obviously there's an arms race for getting the top-notch facilities, having the best collectives gauged at athletes. How do you feel like Arkansas, from your time coaching here, um, has kind of had the right sell for athletes, and, and what makes it unique in comparison to the rest of the SEC programs, yeah. especially UT and OU? Yeah, uh, you know, Oklahoma, there's Oklahoma State, you know, and and, Arkansas State is also in Arkansas. It's not. It's a non-power five team. It's a very good football team. Very good coach. Um, but in our state, we're, the Razorbacks are it. And Texas has a lot of followers. Oklahoma has a lot of followers. But we're it in the state of Arkansas. And I think that's very unique. Uh, I think you grow up as a baby. And there's not any split. You're a hog. And. Uh, uh, so I think that's a very, very uh, unique situation that we have. The passion is very unique uh, in the state. And uh, so I think, I think Oklahoma and UT will fit in really well with all those things. I love, I think it'll make us, if, that make, if it makes sense, more powerful because we'll, we'll be able to travel easier. And uh, hopefully uh, when we go into opponents, uh, arenas that we're able to take a lot of people in there. Final question on the left. Peter Dickerson came back this year, his final year, and he talked about he had kind of some unfinished business to do, and he really wanted to, you know, make his team proud and make his state proud. What does that mean to have an athlete like that come back specifically for, he doesn't want the glory for himself, he wants to make others proud. What does that say about him as an athlete? Mature. Um, smart, wise, uh, good parenting. I mean, um, you just don't, that just doesn't happen. And he means it, you know what I mean? It just doesn't happen. I think he's a little bit along your line of Arkansas. I think his loyalty is to the fans and to the state of Arkansas and to his teammates. and. And he wants, he's got that chip. He's got that underdog. I want to prove, you know, he was 14th two years ago. Well, hell, so was I, you know. And, and so he, he wanted to prove people wrong. He had something to prove. Uh, he really doesn't, but he thinks he does, and that drives him because he's proven everything he needs to prove to his head football coach. I can promise you that. But I look for him to have a wonderful, wonderful season because he's driven to have that because of things you just mentioned. Coach, great job as always. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you.